Well, hello there, Retro PC Durham. It's Chris here with another Lenovo Think Center. So this is a 70, A70, a Think Center A70. Small form factor. So this common design uh, of the time where you can have it as a standard desktop or it's got little foot pads here where you can actually sit it up and stand it up like a tower. Uh, so it can go either way uh, in a business setting. You never know how you would want to hook these things up. We want to have it pretty modular. Front end wise, we've got our standard complement, a DVD multi burner with the button, power button, two USB ports. We've got our headphone and microphone jacks. And then it looks like there's a punch out here. So maybe in this generation of Lenovo Think Centers, there may have been perhaps another model that had some kind of additional connector on the front of the system. Maybe I'm thinking the possibility of a front VGA or display port connector could have been something that was available on this one, just a theory. But if we move around to the back of the system, we'll see. All right, so this is kind of interesting. Um, again, going on with the, you know, not really being its toolless design, but kind of weird design is, uh, the front end of this, the first piece, is to flip up this front front section to get to the rest of the machine. But the front panel of the system doesn't stay on when you start tilting it up. So we actually have to pop it off. And it will pop off on its own if you lift the panel off. But essentially you have to take it off. And it still has front uh, cable connectors. So the next thing we do is turn this up. And now we can access some additional components inside the system here. I've got uh, our front case system fan underneath. We can see we have our hard disk drive. That hard disk drive, again, is not so easy to get a hold of. I actually have to unscrew it if I want to remove it from this system. The one nice thing about this one is it does put this little clasp here so the door doesn't drop down on you while you're trying to service, system, service the system. Then we've got our optical drive here, uh, which appears to have... Yeah, it has screws on the opposite side as well attaching it. So there's no toolless removal of these two drives if you need to service them. Uh, we've got a nice little baffle set up here to be able to make sure we get optimum cooling down on the processor. And then on the system board, we've got a pair of SATA connectors for our optical drives, and then one additional SATA connector that's available here for, I don't know, I guess an optional device. We've got a PCI connector. We've got two by one PCIe, and then one by 16. So again, if you needed a low profile video card, you could add something like that in here. We only have two DDR3 slots available for memory, so I got a pair of 2 gig DIMMs in here for a total of 4 gig. I'm pretty sure the maximum memory on this was actually 4, four gig anyway, but we'll take a little look at that in a minute. We've got our front panel connectors and USB connectors all here. There is one additional USB header here, so if for some reason you wanted to connect additional USB ports and route them somewhere, I don't know where, uh, you'd have the option to do that as as well on this system. And then we've got our CMOS battery in here as well. So we'll get this closed back up and booted up and we'll take a look at what's going on in Windows. Off we go. So this system with the Intel G41 chipset. I uh, did support DDR3 memory, which is pretty cool. Uh, and the processor range you had was some Celeron processors, some Pentium E series processors, right? Uh, and then you also had some Core 2 dual processors available as well, the E7400 up to the E8600. So a pretty good breadth of processors supported in this system. Uh, memory wise, again, we had those two DIMM sockets uh, with a maximum support of four gig worth of RAM. I don't know if you could actually get eight up and going on this one. I didn't actually test with any four gig uh, DIMMs in here to see if it would actually boot up and run properly. Um, as noted, we had those optical drives there. There was room to add a little bit extra to it if you wanted to. Graphics on this one are provided by the Intel GMA 4500. And then a 
obviously if you needed better graphics you would add something else to it. Um, Specs that I found online said that there were two low pro, or there were two graphics cards that were also available as options for this. There was a GeForce 310 uh, with a half a gig and then a Quadro FX 380. Now I'm assuming, I'm pretty sure that the 310 would have definitely been available on a low pro. Um, and if the FX 380 maybe was the same as the 310 but it was the professional certified version that that would have been a low pro as well. So at least there were some options for you to be able to go. But with half a gig of memory, obviously, obviously that's not a huge amount of graphics capability added to it. All right, let's quickly take a look at what we've got from a processor perspective. This is, as the sticker noted, an Intel Celeron. And this is an E3400 Celeron processor. So we've got 2.6 gigahertz, and that's two cores with no hyper-threading available. Now, this could have been considered a Pentium-class processor, I think, the E3400, but it still had the Celeron ranking, so very interesting. Nomenclature, naming, whatever. 4 gig of SD RAM that's installed in here. Some of it's getting used for the graphics. And then we've got our... 300 gig SATA hard drive available for this system. And that about wraps up the summary of this Think Center A70. Well, I hope you enjoyed taking a look at this old machine with me uh, before it makes its way off to its charitable donation for its second life as a uh, home or lab computer. And in these uncertain times, I hope you are staying safe and staying healthy, and we will catch you in the next one.